Hi workshoppers, I'm out on this hot and sunny day for another road trip and this time I've come to see the beginning of something new. Well hello and welcome back. I'm here at Spinner's Mill in Lee and I'm here to see the opening of the new Northwest Computer Museum. It's going to be opened by Steve Ferber. I might get a chance to have a word with him, we'll see. Uh, let's have a look. The Northwest Computer Museum occupies space on the fourth floor of this industrial mill. It's been open for a short while, but what we're attending today is the official opening ceremony. I'm including all the presentations, barring camera glitches, and the opening ceremony itself, and then we'll take a look around the museum. We'll hear first from Joseph Kay, the director of the museum, then Joe Platt, the director of Spinner's Mill, and finally from Professor Steve Ferber, co-designer of the BBC Micro and ARM microprocessor. Meanwhile, meet Kelly, a rather uncooperative AI. Hello, welcome to the official launch of Northwest Computer Museum. Uh, I'm going to get a bit nervous up here, so please bear with me. Uh, we're good, we're, we're, this is a new thing what we're doing. Uh, we're actually going to get the AI to do the introductions. So it's either going to go well, <laughs> or we're going to have a good laugh here. So <laughs> let's start. Not, not gone so far, so bear with us. Has she stopped talking to us? Yeah. <laughs> Just put 10 pence in your knee. 10 p in the knee, so. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> Anyone know any jokes? <laughs> Stop it, feet. Hello, my name is Kelly, and I am here to guide you through the grand opening of the Northwest Computer Museum. Before we begin, I must inform you that everything I say is AI generated in real time, so please pardon any mispronunciations, mistruths, or outright fabrications. As an AI, my goal is to give you all the information you need and provide you with the best experience possible. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Joe Kay, the creator of the Northwest Computer Museum. Without his vision and hard work, this museum would not exist. Please give him a warm welcome and indulge in his remarkable story about how he made his dream a reality. Joe Kay, the stage is yours. Thank you, Kelly. I've got some notes here, and the first one says, I'm Joe. I think I didn't really need that one. Um, nice. Do you know what? I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. I got, got late arrival. Don't embarrass them. Yeah, like she says, my name is Joseph Kay. I started this um, project uh, around five years ago. And one of the questions which actually I always get asked is, why? And when I, when I always answer the question, I always say it's because when you live through it, it's actually quite, it's exciting, you know, we're waiting for the next computer to come out and so on. And um, it, was, 
it was the magic time. And I, I, I feel myself lucky that I've lived through this. And um, but so when people do come through and they say, I remember that computer, I remember that computer, and then they sit down and do you know what? When they go out, and this is what I really get, to, you know, a feel for, is when they say, It's an amazing place, you've done very well. And I have to say, I couldn't have done it without all my volunteers. I remember the name one because there's so many of them, um, but they have absolutely done amazing. Uh, but one thing which we are also doing today, I don't know if this is the next one, is we're gonna launch a music video, which was done in the museum. Uh, oh, and uh, thanks to my wife, because I'll get told off of that one. <laughs> uh, over to you. For your inspiring speech. Now, I would like to introduce Joe Platt, the patron of the Northwest Computer Museum. Joe has been a huge supporter of the museum since its inception, and her dedication to preserving computing history has been instrumental in its success. Joe, would you like to say a few words about what this museum means to you and why it's important for the community? The stage is yours. Okay. Thank you. And, and I don't, you've not actually explained why she's called Kelly, because I think most of us in here are of a certain age, and um, I think we'll all remember the film Weird Science, um, hence Kelly. I think every boy's fantasy that's um, of, of that age. Um, but I'm, I'm Jo Platt, um, and yes, I am the general manager um, of the mill. Um, I've been here since 2020. Um, and at that point, Joe had already secured a space here. Um, Kelly's right, um, and Joe's right. I'd met um, Joe a few years before. So before this role, I um, was the Member of Parliament for Lee, for this area. And one day, uh, Joe Kay um, had made an appointment to see me, and he'd come into the office and he said, Joe, I've got this idea. Um, I've got all these computers. Um, I've got all these volunteers, we've got so many ideas that we want to basically take root. And I think the thing that really, really struck me about the conversation that we had, that I had with Joe at that time, it wasn't just about showcasing computers. Um, it wasn't just about being a museum. It was about the educational value of what he was wanting to do. Um, and I think Joe mentioned it in his speech there. Obviously, he lived through a time when things were exciting, when technology was exciting, when he was producing fantastic engineers, um, such as Joe, because I think he, he plays himself down as well. Obviously, that's, that's his career, and it has been his passion all his life. And for me, at that time, I was the Shadow Minister for Digital Implementation, um, for Government Digital Implementation. And you can imagine how bad that is. So, I mean, what I used to, I mean, I have a background in digital, <clears throat> but what I used to always bring it back to was the place of Lee. And looking at our young people today in education and how many of them would get these top jobs um, in digital and technology. And that's not to downplay the amazing um, organisations and companies that we have maybe in the centre of Manchester, London and all the big cities, but somewhere like Lee, we don't have them jobs here. So for me, that was a real, real passion. And when I met Joe, that's basically what he was using. He wanted to bring that technology, he wanted people to learn from the past, in order to be able to move forward. So Joe's idea isn't just a museum. It isn't just a time capsule. It's a way of moving forward and it's a way of educating the next generation who are going to be our tech engineers, who are going to be our computer programmers, who are going to invent new things as well. And I think, you know, I think probably most of you here um, will know that that's absolutely what we need to do as a country. Um, in being able to sort of move forward and, and keep up with the rest of the world. Um, 
I'm so, so proud of Jo, and I am going to mention, <coughs> and, I'm, and, and it's not a, um, a, a, a mention that I um, sort of say lightly. So I always say, behind every good man is a great woman. And this is to Helen, because Helen, how you put up with all of them computers in your house for so, so long, you know, you, you, you are a good woman, and I know you're the driver behind what Joe does as well. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic to see such a great team. Um, and I do also want to say a really big thank you to the volunteers and, um, and Mike here and, and all the others. Uh, Blue, there's, there's, there are too many to mention. They are all, all fantastic, and they've all put so many, many hours um, into this place. Um, I will give you a little bit of an update about Lee Spinner's Mill. We are a grade two star listed mill. Um, so basically it was falling apart at the seams. Um, there was um, a, a volunteer drive to save the engine house. And when obviously this event is over, I we'll, would we'll, we'll urge you to go to floor one. Um, we have some volunteers who do tours about the history of the mill. Um, obviously we were a cotton mill and we still have our uh, double engine that's, uh, in, that's in place here now. It's a fantastic experience and we've got some fantastic volunteers down there that will guide you through. Um, but obviously we wanted to save the rest of the building and what better way to do it by giving space and opportunity to all, for organisations to take root um, such as the Northwest Computer Museum. So, so far we've got about 65 businesses and organisations in here. We're just building up on floor five. They're all reserved and we're not even built yet. And we've got a waiting list of about, we've had a waiting list for about over a, a hundred. And it's, um, it's a phenomenal place on that basis. We obviously charge very cheap rents because we're in an old crumbly mill. But with an old crumbly mill, it comes lots and lots and lots of problems. And for those that have experienced the lift, that's just that's just one of them. There's many, many more. Um, that I mean, really, that's all I've got to say uh, today because today is uh, the day for Joe. Helen, the volunteers of Northwest Computer Museum. You will absolutely enjoy the full experience and as well, you know, enjoy the full experience of the mill and the other organisations that, that are in here as well. But thank you very much and, and welcome to the mill. sharing your insights with us. Now it is time to showcase an exciting new development at the museum. We are thrilled to announce that we will be exclusively playing the music video, History in the Making, by the British IBM. The music video has been filmed here at the Northwest Computer Museum, and we are delighted to present this to you on the day of its general public release. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy this unique blend of computer history and catchy music. Thank you. Now unfortunately I have to skip over the music video to avoid potential copyright issues, but as the band has published it on their channel I'll provide a link below so that you can watch it if you want to. to introduce our keynote speaker for today, Professor Steve Ferber. Prof. Ferber is a distinguished computer scientist, best known for his work on the development of the ARM microprocessor. He has been awarded numerous accolades for his contributions to the field of computing and is considered one of the pioneers of computer architecture. He is also a fellow of the Royal Society and member of the Order of the British Empire. Please help me in welcoming Prof. Ferber to the stage. <laughs> Guilty the introduction. Uh, yes. So I'm, I'm Steve Ferber. I'm Professor of Computer Engineering at the University of Manchester. I'm semi-retired, like most of the exhibits out there. I'm a bit of a relic these days. Um, 
but it's uh, it's great to be here. I was born and brought up in the Northwest and went to school in Manchester uh, before spending the middle 20 years of my life in Cambridge at the University and then at Acorn, and then I moved back to Manchester in 1990. So I've been in the Northwest uh, most of my life. I'd certainly like to congratulate Joe and all his volunteers on their achievements in setting this museum up. You can. You can see it's been a huge effort and a huge amount of commitment has gone into it. So it's great to see where they've got to. And when I come to these places, um, you know, I kind of see my career laid out before me as I walk around the room. It's a very odd feeling. Um, how many of you here have seen the movie Micro Men? It's about 50% hands up. So, of course, Micro Men tells the story of um, the original BBC Micro contract um, and, and uh, gets quite a good theme of the rivalry between Chris Curry and Clive Sinclair. Um, I am played in the movie by an actor, which is a very strange feeling. Um, Sam Phillips uh, plays me and I'm often asked how accurate the film is. Um, most of the anecdotes in the film are, are correct as far as I know. I was never, I, I don't think I've ever met Clive Sinclair in person, so I don't know about that side of it, but the acorn side was reasonably accurate, although I do have to explain that the way I'm portrayed, um, I have a few problems with. First of all, I've never smoked, okay? <laughs> and, and, and Sam portrays me as chain smoking as I'm soldering together the prototype of the BBC Micro which of course was actually wire wrapped, but that's a problem. Um, I, I, I haven't worn, I, I, I've only worn glasses since I was in my mid forties, uh, so I have good eyesight. I like to tell people that when I was young, I knew the resistor color codes and I could read them all off. And today I can't even see the resistors. Now, <laughs> that's partly because of my somewhat increased age and partly because the resistors, of course, are not tinier, so they're now a fraction of a millimetre on the back of a surface mount board. Um, and, and you can barely see the resistors, let alone any... Uh, I don't think they have colour codes on anyway, but I can't see if they do. Um, so, um, what else? Oh yeah, Sam, Sam had a beard. I've never had a beard. Uh, it's the nature of my hair that if I tried to grow a beard, it would be deeply unimpressive anyway. Um, so I never bothered. But I, I, I do confess to wearing tank tops in the 70s, in the 80s, so I suppose that bit uh, was reasonably accurate. Um, but anyway, it, it, it's great to be here. Um, there are many stories I could tell you about the acorn years, um, some of which are portrayed in Micro Men and some of which are, are completely separate. Um, but I don't think we have time for my complete life history. Um, so I congratulate Joe again and, and uh, look forward to the official opening of the museum shortly. Berber, for sharing your incredible insights with us. We are grateful for your presence here today. I would also like to thank all the speakers and attendees for making this grand opening a resounding success. As we come to the end of our program, I would like to hand things back over to Joe Kay, the creator of this museum, for the rest of the day's events. We have a lot of exciting activities planned, so please feel free to explore, enjoy, and make the most of this wonderful facility. Once again, thank you all for being here. It has been an honor to guide you through this event. By the way, does anybody know where I can find John Connor? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for coming down and thank you to my key speakers and thank you to uh, Professor Steve Berber and Joe. Uh, you can tell you've done this one before, haven't you? Uh, so we've only got one more thing to do, which I'm gonna ask uh, Professor Steve Berber to actually officially open the museum. So if you can, please. You can come now. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, one of the things when you put every plan in, uh, when you do plans, something else goes wrong. Because we actually had a plaque 
with obviously your details on because they're the ground on it. And they said it'll be here Tuesday. So it's a great honour for me uh, to ask Professor Steve Berber to officially open North West Computer Museum. Okay, it's both an honour and a pleasure to declare the North West Computer Museum officially open. <laughs> So while Prof Ferber signs random BBC micros and other memorabilia, we'll head into the museum. <laughs> First impressions, this place is jam-packed with stuff. Some of the more fragile or delicate items are in display cases, but otherwise all the exhibits on the outer walls are available for use. While the computers on the middle bench can't be powered, though apparently most of them are in working condition. On this side, computers from the 70s and 80s, with 90s further down the room. With offerings from Commodore, Apple, Tandy, Atari, Sinclair, Acorn, Amstrad. See how many you can recognise. Now from this corner we have game consoles, starting with the bat and ball pong games and ending with the beginning of the modern era. I'll come back and have a closer look at these later. Here we have PCs and compatibles, including the original IBM machines. The middle tables are crammed with a huge variety of machines. Here's a pet with a Mickey Mouse keyboard. And to be honest, it doesn't feel that bad. I've used worse. Yeah. 
Here we have an example of portable and business computers including huge luggables with tiny screens and an army of laptops and a few Apple computers. There's clearly a lot of effort gone into the signage around the room, chronicling computer history in relation to the exhibits here. Just watch you don't get your toes stood on while you're reading. On the other side of the wall, a classroom has been set up, and like the one at Bletchley Park, it's been populated with BBC micros. Around the outside walls there are yet more examples of classics, some older, some newer. Sat together an Apple II and a PET 4032, the first computers I got my hands on. Made me smile when I realised that Steve Ferber had been round with his marker pen and signed every one of the beebs on display. In addition to the classroom, the museum also has a cafe, a shop, a VR gaming space and a small arcade. It has a fun family atmosphere and there's a lot to see, so it's well worth a visit if you're local. Now before I leave, I want to go back and have a look at those early game consoles. This is the grandstand cartridge based system. Back in the day our local branch of Debenhams had a display extolling the virtues of this chunky multi-axis controller, though I think it may have been the Atari VCS version I saw. This is the first time I've ever actually used a grandstand and, well to say I'm unimpressed is an understatement. The games are absolutely dire. They have quite a few here and I didn't find any that make use of the fancy joystick features. Take this game for example. The enemies home in on you and you have to manoeuvre so that they crash into the blue blocks before they crash into you. That's it. This console makes history as the first of its type, but failed as better options such as the Atari VCS came out. Talking of which, there's one right next door. On the Atari I tried Space Invaders, Pac-Man and a few others and it's definitely a step up from the grandstand though the original controllers are not the easiest thing to use. I'm guessing that Debenhams were right in that the best option was the VCS with the video command joystick. The museum also has a Philips video pack which is almost as uninspiring as the grandstand. What I personally ended up with was a hardware based Pong style console, but unlike this Binatone it took cartridges so there were more game options. Here's one in the same PC50X family and I'll have more on that when I get mine out of its box for a look in a later video. Well that just about wraps it up for today. I did get to have a short but interesting chat with Professor Ferber and took an inevitable selfie using an ARM processor which he invented. And the less said about my inability to read exit signs, the better. See you next time.